Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be delving further into tile maps. This specific tutorial is going to cover using prefabs with your tile maps. If this video helps you out, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. To start the video, I'm going to talk about the basics of what we're doing. Essentially, what I'm going to be doing here is creating two different scripts, one that will have enemy movement that will attach to a prefab, and the other script will be a tile script that will use the prefab so we can place it on our tile map. To begin, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. If you've watched the previous videos, you'll notice that I'm on the custom tiles scene. You don't need to have watched any of the previous tile mapping videos for this video. I'm simply using a tile map that I created in a previous one as a backdrop for this one. So I'm just going to call this folder custom enemy. And I'm going to use this folder to hold all of my stuff for this video. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and put my enemy art into the folder. So I'm just going to drag my enemy over here, which is a beetle. I'm going to go up here, and my beetle is pretty big, so I'm going to put it at 300 pixels per unit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drag him into the scene. We'll go ahead and change his layer to 1 so he can be seen. And then we're going to add a polygon collider. And we'll make him a trigger, even though we won't be doing anything with him specifically in this video besides moving him. Typically, an enemy like a beetle will be tagged so that way whenever the player runs into it, something happens. For this specific video, I'm just going to be getting it moving left and right. Now we'll go ahead and add another component, and we'll make a new script. And this script will be called enemy movement. I'm going to go ahead and pull my enemy movement script into my custom enemy folder. And then we'll go ahead and open it up. So this script's going to con consist of a few things. It will have two different parameters. We'll have a start point and an end point. The start point and the end point will be represented by vector threes. And they'll just be parameters within our class. We'll go ahead and initialize those inside our start function. And the start point will simply be this transforms position. And the end point will be three units from our start point to the left. So we'll go ahead and do a new vector three. And all we'll do is take our start point the x of that and subtract 3 to get 3 units to the left, and then we'll just take our start points y and our start points x. And that will be our start and end point. From here we'll go ahead and our update we'll call the move function. And then we'll go ahead and create that function. It'll simply be a private void function. And inside it, we're going to do three things. We're going to be checking when our player passes the start point, and then flipping him to the left. And then when the player passes the end point, flipping him to the right. Whether one of those or neither of those happens, we'll be moving our character afterwards. So to begin, we'll check first for if the player has passed the start point. So we'll just be doing X. Our enemy will just be moving in the horizontal position. And then if this is true, we want to set our enemy to be 90 degrees, which will just be facing left. So we'll do that with a vector 3. And it'll just be 0, 0, 90. And then we'll check for our endpoint. And do the same general thing, but in the opposite direction. So I'll set our enemy to being 270 degrees. And then finally, whether one of those or neither of those happens, we want to make sure our enemy is moving. So we'll go ahead and translate. And we're going to be translating by the vector 3 up because we're in a 2D space. So we want it to be moving essentially its forward. And then we'll multiply it by some speed. And then we'll multiply it by time.delta time. 
And this is the entirety of our movement script. So now we'll move on to creating our tile script. Again, we'll just create a new C sharp script and we'll just call this enemy tile. And we'll open it up. And then with this one, we'll need to add a few usings. The first using we're going to need is the tile map one. So it's unity engine dot tile maps. The next one we need is for creating a menu item. The only reason you need this is in the Unity editor. And the purpose of this menu item is so we can access and create a asset of this tile. So we only need it if we're inside the Unity engine. So we want to make sure that we have if Unity editor. And then we're using Unity editor. And then we'll add our end if. The next thing we're going to want to do is get rid of our mono behavior inheritance. We want this to be a tile, so we're just going to inherit from tile. And then what we want is to be able to access our prefab, and so we'll create a public game object, and I'm just going to call it enemy. And what we'll do later is simply drag and drop our prefab into this parameter. So we'll go ahead and get rid of our start and update as those are mono behaviors. What we're going to do next is we're going to override some of the tile functions. The first one that we'll override is the startup function. This is essentially like a start function for the tile. But what we want to do here is set our base rotation. My beetle's in a vertical position by default, but I want it to be going horizontal. So I'm just going to say on startup, rotate my beetle 90 degrees to the left. So this is simply if go, which is game object, then take our game objects transform and make the rotation a new quaternion of 0, 0, 90, 0. The startup returns a bool, so we need to make sure that we return true to show that it was completed. The next function we're going to override is our get tile data. If you've watched the previous two tile mapping videos, we've overrided this function in both of them and have adjusted specific things in it. This one will be extremely simple and pretty much just there to set some base level things and then set our enemy to the tile data's game object. So we'll go ahead and override this function. And again, we'll get rid of the base and then we'll go ahead and do our tile data's color. And this will just be white because I want the color to be what I have it set to. But with color, you could add different highlights to your tile. And then we'll go ahead and do tile data and our flags. And we'll set these to just be lock transform. And we'll do essentially the same with our colliders, but with type being none, as our prefab already has a collider on it. And then finally, the important part is that we do tile data dot game object equals our enemy parameter that we will drag in. The last thing that we have to do with this script is our menu item. So again, we want to have our if unity editor. And then we can go ahead and create the menu item. And I'm going to place this menu item under our assets window, and I'm going to call it enemy tile. And then we'll go ahead and create the function that will happen with this. So it'll be a public static void, and I'm just going to call it create enemy tiles. And then inside this, I'm going to create the path that I want it to take. And this will be done with the editor utility. And then save file panel in project. Our title will be save enemy tile. Our default name will be new enemy tile. The extension will be asset. Our message will be save enemy tile. And then assets for our path. And then we'll make sure that our path exists. If it doesn't, we'll just go ahead and return. Otherwise, we will create the asset. So we'll do asset database dot create asset. And then it will be scriptable object dot create instance of enemy tile. And then we'll put it at path. And then we want to make sure to add our end if.
And that's the entirety of the scripting we're going to be doing in this video. So we did the basic enemy movement and then we created a script that inherits from tile and we'll take in a game object of enemy and then we gave its tile data some base information. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go up to our assets, we'll go down to our enemy tile, we'll put it inside our custom enemy folder and then we'll go ahead and open it in our inspector and as you can see, you can see the enemy parameter that we have here. So we'll go ahead with our beetle two that we have here and we'll create a prefab of it. We'll go back to our new enemy tile and drop our prefab in there. So now that we have our beetle as our parameter, what we wanna do is we'll go ahead and delete this prefab from the scene. And we want to make sure we don't overwrite our tile map background. So we'll go ahead and create a new tile map. And this one we'll just call tile map enemy. Now that we've done that, we'll go over to our tile palette. We want to make sure our enemy tile map is selected as the active one. And then we'll go ahead and create a new tile palette. I'll just call this enemy palette. And then we'll go ahead and drag our new enemy tile into the tile map. We want to delete the enemy palette that popped up. And then we'll go ahead and paint. And as you can see, it pops up. And then we'll go ahead and click play. And as you can see, the beetle is going back and forth on the screen. So this is just a very simple way of putting prefabs into a tile for your tile palettes. If this helped you out, please like and subscribe. I hope this helps you make your 2D maps even faster. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.